Brother Charles again. Hey, I want to talk to you about the walk of the, of the believer today and what that means. I'm slightly going to talk about it. I, uh, I know Ephesians is sit, walk, and stand. I, I love studying that kind of stuff. But let's just do a lightweight thing and see what it means for us to walk. I want to start here at Matthew 5. and Jesus said some pretty powerful stuff in verse 14. It says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that it giveth light unto all who are in the house. You are the light, so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, you know, it's, let me go on a little further. It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets, but I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill the law. I've got some episodes on Jesus fulfilling the law. Everything he did was fulfilling the law. I'm not here to talk about that today. For verily I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall no wise pass away from the law till all be fulfilled. Now I'm, I'm, I, want to, I want to share this because I think this is important. And we see that whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoso, whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is kind of powerful. It's kind of a promise of God. I want to, I want to be the light of the world. I want to walk in the light. Look, we got to understand what light is. You know, it's, it's a... Uh, it's the nature of God, really, is what it is, the light of God, and we'll break that down. Let's go to John 1 and 4. We see that Jesus comes along here. John 1 and 4, it says, In him was life, and the life was what? The light of men, Zoe, the, the life of God, the Zoe life. And so the light, the light was the life of men. The life was the light of men. Now, now listen to this. It says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend, comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men might through him what might believe. He was not the light as John, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Man, I tell you, that's good stuff. And so has your light been lit? You know, there's a lot of people ask Jesus to come into their life, but they don't quite have an understanding. You know what? A word that it really gets a hold of me. I think it's Psalms 119 and 30. Uh, it says, 119 and 130, says the entrance of his word brings light. See, so again, you can't separate Jesus, the written word, from the living word. It, it's inseparable. And I'll leave that alone. We've talked about that in other places. You know, in Romans 6, 4, we're just going to hit some of these. In Romans 6, 4, and these are... This is written this is in everybody's Bible, not just in mine alone. We begin to see this. In Romans 6, 4, he brings something out here. Short and sweet. It says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in what? Newness of life. That we should walk in newness of life. Now, you know, 1 Corinthians 5, 17, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Oh, we are new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. See, this new creation. We're walking in a newness of life. I came, I, I came into a new kingdom. Let me put it this way: a new government. When I came into Christ, as I begin to read this word, I, I begin to do what the Word of God said. I become under a new set of rules, a new set of laws. It's like a new job. They got different standards, different rules, different laws, and it's the same with the kingdom of God when we come to light. There's a lot of people that have asked Jesus Christ to come in their life, never understood anything about the Word. They know nothing about the Word of God. And I'm encouraging you to get into the Word. And, and great, listen to this carefully now. Romans 8.1. Now, you know, Romans is the book of, of the law that we're under, really. And that's why law is mentioned around 60 times in the book of Romans. But now let me read you 8.1. It says, Therefore, now, there is now, there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, there's no condemnation. And that's another teaching in itself. For the law of the Spirit of life. See, now, we're under this law of the Spirit of life. The new law. 
in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of what? Sin and death. Woo, man, that's a good teaching in itself right there. So now I'm in this law of the spirit of life in Christ. For what the law could not do, verse 3, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but what? After the spirit. See? Now listen to the very next verse. It says, it says, For they that are after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. And I could keep going on with that whole context. It's powerful. It's life and peace. Where is the peace of God? It's, it's right there for you. It's in this word. I mean, hello, I'm not here to talk about peace. I'm reminding myself, but understanding the light and the walk that God has for everybody to walk. I believe if every believer today got off of their blessed assurance and got moving for the things of God, we could change the world like that, you know. I mean, everybody. It's everybody's job. It's not just my job. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't choose this position. Now, let, let's talk about the, the flesh and the spirit here just a little bit. Let me go to 1 Corinthians 3.3. 3. And I might want to read a little bit of this out of the Amplified Bible. In fact, I think I will. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3 because it brings a little more depth to it. And you know, he gets, and it says, For you are not carnal, for, yet, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? You know, the Amplified says, walk as mere unchanged men, that you are still infants in the new life. I mean, babies. Uh, and I, I want to boil this up because, see, there's, to me, I want to understand things. I'm not trying, I'm just a person that wants to break things down. However, brother, I cannot talk to you as to spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh, in whom the carnal nature predominates, to, to mere, as to mere infants in the new life in Christ, unable to talk yet. Now, you know, this is, this is scary because, now these guys are, are in some pretty good positions. Now they say that. They're, they're born again believers, supposedly. But now it says, in verse 4 it says, For a while one saith, I'm Paul. This is why they're, they're mere unchanged men. They're infants in the new life. They don't have a revelation of the body of Christ, that's for sure. And it says, For one saith, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? He gave that to every man. Ministers. You're all ministers. See, if people get a revelation of that. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God giveth the increase, right? That's what I shared with somebody today. Go sow the good seed, go your way. I think it's Matthew 13, 29 or 27, somewhere right in there. Go, the enemy came, sowed his seed, went his way, and the Holy Spirit told me, go sow the good seed, go your way. What happens to it is his fault. One plants into the waters, God gives the increase. Right? All the while he's making it grow, it says in the Amplified Bible. He that planted and he that watered are one. See? Whoa, get this. See that? What were they? They had apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. But now some people go, well, I'm an Apollosite and I'm an Apollite. I've talked about this in other places. They begin to bring division. See, division came in. This is why they're unchanged men. Envy and strife, debate, right? We're going to see this in some of these, a little more of these teachings as we go down the right road here. And it says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, every man that re shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. We are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. It's a good word, isn't it? So we begin to realize that God's only, there's only one body, my Bible says. Let me go over there to Ephesians 4, 4, 4, 5. One God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I mean, that seven, seven, seven-fold unity there, that's what that's talking about. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3, moving on with this walk here. I wish people would read their Bibles more and get a revelation, want revelation knowledge, want understanding. And it says here, For we, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, 
and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the what? The obedience of Christ. Come on now, this is good stuff. This is talking about a little bit of our walk. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. Wow. So now I've got to, I've got to realize, well, I'm disobedient and I've got to come into this obedience. God respects that, see. I'm not here to talk about obedience and disobedience, but it's not good because disobedience is, is as the sin of witchcraft, it says. Galatians 5 and 16. God's looking for people that are going to be doers of the word, right? So as I read through this word and I begin to see, uh, I don't know, i got a lot of years of reading this word and I keep finding more things than I'm supposed to do, right? And God, and God wants us to do. 5 and 16 in Galatians. Just talking a little more about the walk of the believer today. If you really are a believer, then you're going to be a doer of the word and you're going to do what it says. Let me go to 5 and 14. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. For this I say, walk in the spirit. Right? This is talking about the fleshly guy before here, right? We've seen that in other verses. It says, this I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that we cannot do the things that we would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. This is good, this is good stuff. Now, see, there's a difference. My flesh wants one thing, my spirit wants the other, but see, I had to change my whole, by the renewing of my mind, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And now I don't do things the way I used to. I'm in another kingdom again, as I said. I, I have a different walk in life. I have a different purpose and different things that God wants me to do, right? Let me go to 25. It says, but if you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, right? Woo! Let us not be serious, vain of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. See, back to the flesh again. And we begin to see this as we walk through this Word of God and begin to see what it says. Let's go to Ephesians. I mean, no, go. And like I said before, Ephesians is sit, walk, and stand. Now, and now let's go here to Ephesians 4.1. It says, Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation, of the vocation wherewith you are called. That you walk worthy of the vocation which you are called. See, there's a, there's a walk. Give them the, if you're the light of the world, then you've got to walk in this light. We're going, to, we're going to see light and darkness here pretty quick. I'm going to come to that. It says, with all lowliness and meekness, with all long suffering, forbearing one another. How is that? In love. Forbearing one another in love. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Well, I told you already, one body, one spirit, even as you are called and one hope of your calling. There's only one hope of your calling. I mean... And that's today, right? Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And, and this is all part of this walk. Now, let me, let me, uh, let's go to Ephesians 5. One. Let me look at another walk here. I like this one right here. It says, that, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Aroma, as it says in some things. Now, now think about this. Now, we, <laughs> let me back up to 32. It says, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted for forgiving one another, even as God, even as God, for Christ's sakes, has forgiven you. Now, that's a pretty good example, right? Then he says, be, be therefore followers of God as dear children, walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us. Now, we have to walk in love. I mean, I was just talking to somebody this morning, way early, about, they called me about walking in love. And it, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a championship thing, but if I don't really know what love is, people have a different understanding of love. And there's phileo love, and eros love, and agape, agapeo love. Agapeo love is the love of God in the renewed mind brought into manifestation, right? I have to, I have to manifest what, what's within me. It's, it's all part of what I have. Ephesians, Colossians 2 6. Let me read this to you. We'll go over to Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. We're looking at walking in light, right? We're looking at the walk of the believer today, walking in light, right? 
we need to understand is two six. I said, there's lots of light scriptures in this in this in this book. Two six. It says, as ye therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now, so, now think about it. Walk ye in him. You know, let me, 1 Peter 2 and 21, second, yeah, 1 Peter 2 and 21 says, Jesus is our example. We're to follow in his footsteps, right? Come on, I'll, I'll get into a couple more of these here in a minute. So, he was a, he set a pretty good path to walk in. Let's go to 1 John, little John, 1 John, chapter 1. We do verse 5. Little first John, Gospel John, to me, all say the same thing. Now, in 1 John 1, 5, it says, This then is the message which you have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. There's no God, darkness in God of any time. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, listen to this, as he is in the light. Now, see, he just said, now I showed you, you are the light of the world, see. Now, if I'm walking in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Now, this is pretty powerful. We walk in the light as he is in the light. Jesus showed how to walk in the light. It's not, it's not a light like you see here. We've already discovered that, but I want to, Show some. Now, what is darkness? Let's look over here at 2.9. Let's just look at somebody walking in darkness. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness. Come on, I, you know, how are we going to know who's real and who's not real in this hour? We'll know them by their fruits. We'll know them by their fruits. Well, you don't know, Brother Charles, what they've done to me. I've heard that so many times in my life. It doesn't matter what they've done to you. You know, I mean, Stephen's looking up to heaven and says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they're stoning them to death. Right? He looks up and sees Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. He wasn't even sitting down. He's standing there. Right? What did Jesus say? The same thing. He was, he was, he was actually a perfect example of the love of Christ right there, man. I mean, let's leave that alone. He that saith he is in the light, First John 2, 9, and hates his brother is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. I've talked about that none occasion. None occasion. Look it up in your Bible. There's no scandal on in him. He can't scandal anyone. He's not a he's not a talebearer. He's not a gossip. And so on and so forth. It says, none occasion of stumbling in him. He that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness. And knoweth not whether he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. This is powerful stuff. I mean, there's people walking in darkness thinking they're walking in light. Well, I don't have to forgive, you know. Well, you do. If you want God's, you know, you're to forgive even as he has forgiven you, even so do ye, my Bible says. I'm not here to talk about forgiveness. I'm talking about walking in light and in darkness. How do I know somebody's in darkness? Hello, come on. I mean... There's people that hate. They hate. I mean, you know, I, I want to hate what God hates and I want to love what God loves. That's that's how he, that's the heart of God in, in people. That's what brings that heart to people in God. And I think that's so important. Let, let me let me go to um, I just want to bring this light example out to you and bring this up. Let, let me back up to five and six. Two, chapter two, five and six. It says, Whoso ever keepeth his word in him. Verily is the love of God perfected, hereby know that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in, the, in him ought to himself also to walk even as he walked. Isn't that something? Again, Jesus is our example. He, gave, he left us an example. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now think about that. I am the way to what? The way to walk. <laughs> 1 Peter 2 and 21, he is our example and we're to follow in his footsteps. Why would he say that? That we're to walk even as he walked, right? As he is in this world, so are we, 1 John 4 and 17. I mean, as he is, is so powerful. You know, <laughs> as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. To walk, walk in the same way Jesus did. He left you that example. He showed you how to do that. 
And it's a powerful thing. Let's walk in the light, right? Let's don't let this darkness blind our eyes. I don't want to be one of those people that do that. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. Tell somebody else about it. Forward it out. Push the like button if you so much like to. And uh, we, you know, we appreciate it. We love you. We want to just feed you. That's our job. Acts 20 and 28, it said, Give heed to feed the flock of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Father, we seal this word with the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you that it penetrates the hearts and minds of people, Father. It gives them a fire and a zeal to know that as he is, so are we in this world. And we bless you. Amen.